two fruit trees, and a single planting hole. And that's not the limit, according to Tom Spellman of Dave Wilson Nursery. By planting multiple fruit trees and a single planting hole, there are a lot of benefits. And I'm gonna share those benefits in addition to showing you the five-year update on my two plum trees and a single planting hole and the benefits that that can bring to your garden as well. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants and author of Saving the World with the Home Garden. And today I'm sharing with you my two plum trees that we planted here on the property five years ago. And I want you to come on up and just see how remarkably beautiful these two trees are growing side by side in the space and the footprint of what would only be a single fruit tree. So the first advantage of planting multiple fruit trees in the footprint of a single tree is most of us have limited real estate. And for those of you that live with limited backyard real estate, you can actually enjoy the deliciousness of multiple fruit trees in the footprint of a single tree. Just check this out. Looking up, you can see that again, in the footprint of what would otherwise just be a single fruit tree, we're enjoying two delicious flavors. This first plum tree to my left is the Santa Rosa plum. And the general description you can find at the Dave Wilson Nursery website reads that it is the most popular plum in California and Arizona with a juicy, tangy, and flavorful fruit, reddish purplish skin, amber flesh, tinged red, and harvest time is late June in Central California and so fruitful. And if you look at the maturity date, it's between June 25th to July 5th. And then just behind the Santa Rosa plum is my Satsuma plum. And again, reading from Dave Wilson Nursery, it is a longtime favorite plum in California with a molted maroon over green skin, dark red meaty flesh, sweet, mild, not tart, excellent for jam harvest late July, and pollinized by Santa Rosa in beauty. Maturity date, August 5th to August 25th. So the second main point when it comes to limited real estate, the second main point is cross-pollination. Santa Rosa plum we just read is self fruitful, meaning one plum tree is enough to enjoy Santa Rosa plums. But for Satsuma plum success, cross-pollination is required. And the way you accomplish cross-pollination is by planting a different variety. And so the Santa Rosa plum over here to my left cross-pollinized with the Satsuma to then produce all of that delicious fruit right over my shoulder, which we're gonna zoom in and get close to in just a moment. But check out all of that fruit over my right hand shoulder over here with hundreds of pieces of fruit that otherwise would not exist without cross-pollination as the Satsuma requires cross-pollination in order for successful fruit set. So by putting two trees in a single footprint, cross-pollination is very easy by wind and those bees that are traveling between the two different flowers. A third very important backyard orchard concept is successive ripening. And now again, in the footprint of a single tree, as we just read, we're able to enjoy plums over the course of two months instead of just about a week or two. So by planting multiple varieties, you can take a look at the ripening time so you're not stuck with just one flavor of plum and instead you can enjoy a variety of delicious plums over the course of several months by planting the right specific varieties alongside one another, all cross-pollinating each other, which aside from successful fruit set, helps improve the size of the fruit, the flavor of the fruit, and just the overall deliciousness of the fruit. So. These are all important concepts, important for cross-pollination of your fruit trees. Well, I hope you enjoy this blast from the past moment where together we planted this two-in-one fruit tree five years ago. And hopefully this is a refresher for some of the you that were with us way back when. And in the meantime, I'm going to be weeding and mulching and fertilizing as here we are now in June. And again, the light and the metabolism of the plant are now peaking as light hours are increasing, warmer temperatures are approaching. And again, for the plant to successfully support the fruit and continuously grow and again, offer the optimal deliciousness and nutrition from those fruit, we're gonna make sure that we fertilize the plants as well. So again, we're going to weed, mulch, fertilize, and we're even gonna whitewash if necessary depending on what's going on within the tree. 
And then we're gonna conclude with thinning the fruits, an important gardening concept to make sure that you, one, are protecting the tree's branches from breaking under the load of a heavy load of fruit set, in addition to maximizing the size and quality of each of the fruits. I'm gonna go into those details towards the end of this lesson. Well, I hope you enjoy our blast from the past moment. Enjoy. So now we've just inserted the two trees into the hole. I've got you a better view from up above now. And what I'm doing when positioning these two trees, and even though they're gonna be that close and with the roots right on top of one another, just a few inches apart, but what I'm looking at is the primary branches that I'm gonna to wanna to keep. And you're gonna see towards the end, we're still gonna paint the plants um, with our Ivy Organics product, as well as we're going to prune the plant um, at least by 30% and possibly more. But what I'm looking at are these are my two favorite branches, so I'm trying to make sure that they're equally balance to basically create this half of the plant and then I've got these branches over here which again I'm trying to make sure that these branches do not point towards the center but instead are equally balanced away from the center of these two trees and now that I've got them both balanced the way I want within the soil I'm now going to take this improved native soil with the 50% compost with a few added, you know, about a half a cup, maybe a quarter cup of organic fertilizer. And I'm just gonna backfill the soil like so. Before I finish this process, and if you can come a little closer, a very, very important tip is to identify where the graft union is and where that first root is coming off the plant. So before we stabilize these plants, now that there's enough soil, I can kind of manipulate them to get them in the right position. But here's the graft again. And again, if you can control this, you're gonna to wanna to position the graft union, which is actually on this side, away from the sun. So you're gonna to wanna to, um, direct it in a position that's away from the sun and allow the sun to beat up this side of the plant as sunburn is one of the issues, but it won't be an issue because we're gonna be coating it with the Ivory Organics product. But Again, while we're positioning the plant, I can see that the first roots are here, and I'm only gonna wanna coat it by about a quarter inch to a half an inch of soil. So this position's okay. By the time I finish the backfill, it'll be covered like so. But this part of the plant has to remain above the soil. And now let's take a look at the other graft. As you can take a look here, the graft is over here where my finger is, right there. And here is the graft union. And now we're gonna just try to find where that first root is coming up. And it looks like this one's a lot deeper so we're gonna have to pull this one up a lot more than the other tree. So I'm gonna get that out a little more. And now begin to backfill around those roots to stabilize the tree. And now we can come back with a lot more soil. And you can see I'm going in with my fingers and I'm trying to remove any air pockets with the soil as well. It's also very important to um, coat the graft. As you saw, this was the wood that was exposed. And that would be a perfect entryway for, again, the wood boring insects, pathogens, and disease. So the graft union is coated. Now we're just gonna go up all the way up the tree. We're also going to um, coat and cover all of the exposed ends as well. I'm not going to fast forward. I'm going to finish this up real quick and then we're going to conclude the video. So I'll join you guys in just a few more minutes. Let me just finish this up here. So we've just coated the entire plant and all of the pruned tips with the Ivor Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard product. So we just weeded. The weeds are actually competing with the surface roots for nutrients and air. And now with them gone, when we go to fertilize with the Ivory Organics, all-purpose fertilizers, which offer your plants all six plant macronutrients, which include nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. All six plant macronutrients are nutrients plants need in abundance in order for optimal health, performance, fruit set, and so much more. And we're gonna come with the hose later and soak it because the goal is you wanna get the water down to the deepest roots to encourage the roots to keep growing deeper. 
Shallow waterings are gonna result in a shallow root system. Deeper waterings are gonna be, for one, less frequent and is going to help basically strengthen your trees by encouraging the roots to go deep. And once we water, the nutrients will get into the soil and begin to feed the soil biology. This is again, an organic fertilizer that's OMRI certified for organic commercial orchards, as well as backyard growers. And you're basically feeding the soil to feed the beneficial life, which includes the earthworms, the beneficial bacteria and the mycorrhiza, which are those fungal roots that basically network all the plants within your garden. And now by putting a two to three inch layer, you don't wanna to go too thick, but a two to three inch layer of wood chips is going to help keep the soil cool during the summer months, basically serving as a blanket. In the winter months, it actually keeps the soil temperatures warmer. Again, in the summer, keeps it cooler, also helps suppress weeds, helps retain moisture, and that's gonna save you money on your watering bills. And by suppressing weeds, it's gonna help save you a lot of time. The other thing I wanna share with you is if you take a look at the bark, you'll see that it's quite light. And for those of you that remember from five plus years ago, the first thing we did is the day we planted the tree is the day you whitewash your trees with Ivory Organics. And this here is the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard product, which protects your plants from damaging summer sunburn in the winter, winter sun scald, as well as keeps insects and rodents repelled as well. And we're gonna be using color grayish. They can see in the past, we did color white and white is obviously the lightest and naturally reflects the most amount of light and hence keeps the plants the coolest and i just want to share with you here we are all of these years later the bark is still light which is helping to protect the plants from damaging summer sunburn by whitewashing your trees you're helping to protect them from the hottest days of summer come june july august september we've got the hottest temperatures the plants are going to be exposed come summer peak on June 21st to 14 hours of daylight here in the Northern Hemisphere. For some of you, a little bit more, maybe a little less, but the point is 14 hours of sun directly on the tree's trunk is gonna result in first, second, and third degree burns. And even if the bark doesn't crack, and we did share many examples of trees with third degree sunburn damage, with the bark cracked and the underlying cambium tissues destroyed and the plant simply living off of the northern side of the tree that's basically protected from the effects of damaging summer sunburn. By whitewashing your trees now in the spring, you're protecting your plants from the hottest and longest days of summer. And here we are now in the beginning of June, protecting our plants from up to upwards of 14 hours of hot sun from hitting the tree trunk causing first, second, and third degree burns. And we've demonstrated many examples of trees with third degree sunburns from roses, avocados, citrus, plums, apples, and so much more over the years. And by whitewashing it, you're simply keeping the bark cool. So the plant's not putting its resources towards repairing cell damage and bark damage, and instead putting its resources towards growing, flowering, and ultimately for us here, fruiting and creating a lot of delicious fruit instead of repairing damaged bark. Most importantly, you want to protect the heart of the tree. And I always define the heart of the tree as being the tree trunk and then those lower branches. If there's any damage that happens to the extremities of the plant, no big deal. If the heart is protected, it'll continuously create more branches and continuously thrive and perform well year after year. But if the trunk, the primary branch is damaged, then the overall health of the plant is going to be shortened as well. So here we are protecting it. You can see there's some leaking happening. If this were a latex or tar-based product, we're contaminating the soil for 100 years or more. Fortunately, this product is all organic and the color white is Armory certified for commercial organic orchards as well as backyard growers that wanna grow the best organic food. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you protect your wounds such as grafting wounds as well as any of your pruned branches. The product has diatomaceous earth and seven natural oils which include castor, cinnamon, clove, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint to help repel most pests from entering these exposed wood areas. So again, in addition to the seven natural oils, it also has diatomaceous earth that keep most pests. And for those of you with rodent issues, gnawing rodents from girdling the base of your trees, trying to get to the underlying saps. And just check out all of that expansion and growth that's happening within the tree. We're just gonna fill in all of those nooks and crannies like so. 
too much fruit. What's that mean, right? When your tree gives you this much fruit, you want to have them all. But that's not the right thing to do. By thinning the fruit, you're actually giving the parent tree a better chance to be successful year after year. The tree is automatically already dropping some fruit. If you come in a little closer, you can see that this little one is in the process of being aborted. And there's other ones, if you take a look even higher in the tree right here, you can see this group of three are all turning yellow. And the parents say, no, we can't support this much fruit. And the right thing to do is for about every cluster of three is to thin it down to the best one. So these all look good. Here's a group of three, and we're gonna sit, thin it down to just that one. And here's another group of four, and we're gonna thin it down to the biggest and best looking one. Lightening the branch so the branches don't break, the quality and the size of the fruit are gonna be that much better within the next 30 to 60 days. We're gonna finally get to enjoy these delicious fruit. So we've got about a hundred more fruit to thin off before we enjoy a ton of deliciousness next month. If you've enjoyed this lesson, be sure to give us that thumbs up and share us with your gardening friends and family. For those of you that are new, be sure to subscribe and hit the push bell notification to stay connected to all of our educational lessons as soon as they become made available. And as always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.